Welcome back to Duckman Cycles and VW Garage. I'm your host, the Duckman. <laughs> We're back today with my 1968 Fastback, also known as Ruby. That's right, she's right here behind me. Now, ordinarily, I wouldn't even cover this on a video, but because people love to see this car, I figured I would I, I would show what we're doing today. What I'm doing is I'm replacing the battery. Simple as it is, if you've ever had a car for more than about three years, I'd say about three years being the minimum, you've probably found yourself with a dead battery at some point, and uh, you had to replace it. And this car is no different. I think it's about the third battery that I've had in it, because the first battery was just garbage. The second battery that I had in it was from another car. <laughs> and the last battery that I'm putting into it is actually a store-bought brand new battery. So I'm going to demonstrate some of the correct ways to change a battery in your Volkswagen. Uh, it's pretty simple. There's not a whole lot to it. So you're probably going to want to stick around through this video and uh, you'll get a little tour of Ruby at the same time. So please, as always, like, comment, subscribe, plug the little dingle belly you see down there next to the subscribe button. That way you get updates every time I upload a new video. And don't forget to check out Duckman Cycles VW Garage up on the Facebook group page. And if you'd like to email me, Duckman Cycles at duckshit.net. Thanks a lot for watching, guys. We'll be back right after the intro. <laughs> All right, and we're back. And down below here, we've got my charger plugged in. And I've had this in the garage last night. I picked the battery up around dinner time last night. And when I got home, I put it on a 10 amp charge for a couple hours, and then shut it off and went to bed. And then this morning, and this, this by the way, I don't like leaving things plugged in and charging overnight. This thing does off gas, batteries stink like crazy. And there's a lot of possibility or potential that something could short out, it could be a fire. So I shut all of this off at night. Actually, I even go so far as to disconnect the battery at night. Once I got up this morning, I plugged it back in and I gave it about another six hours charge. So it's got about a combined total of about 10 hours and I charged it up at about 10 amps. And you see right now it's got zero amps going into it. So the battery should be fully charged. At this point, it is ready to use. Now, you could certainly go to the store and just buy a battery and just slap it right into your car and start the car and drive away and you'll be fine. But that doesn't mean it's adequately charged. I mean, this thing at 10 amps, it took a good, you know, eight to 10 hours just for it to hit zero amps to prove that this thing actually is charged properly. Now it is kind of important to do that for the longevity of your battery. So you do want to charge your battery before you put it into your car. But at this point, that sucker is ready to go. So let me show you where the battery is inside the Fastback. Now, most air-cooled Volkswagen passenger vehicles, there are a few exceptions, but uh, when it comes to Type 3s or Beetles, they're both in the same spot. And that would be right here, behind the passenger seat, underneath the back seat, and that pile of rubbish there, there's your battery. Now, in order to get to that, you're gonna have to fold both the seats forward, and we're gonna pull the lower seat out of the back here and uh, get it out of the way so that way we can get that battery out of there. Type 3 is a little tricky. Type 1 you actually have a little more room, but the Type 3 has all kinds of armrests and things, so it's really difficult to get this back seat out. Sometimes it's just better to completely remove it from the car. Alright, I think that's good enough. There's our battery terminals. Now these things can be sized anywhere between about 10 and 13 millimeters. Uh, you don't really know what's going to be correct until you actually start digging into it because over the years anybody could have done anything to your car. The terminals could have been changed out. And in my case, the negative wire is actually the red one and the positive one's the black one. I didn't do that. That was done to this car before I ever got to it. What we're going to need to do, pull them terminals off and get this battery pulled out. Okay. Looks like 13 millimeter is correct in here and this one too we need to get that off of there you don't need to completely remove them you just need to get them loose enough so you can you know, watch the wrench don't put it between the terminals like I almost just did just enough so you can get these suckers off of there all right got them off get the wrench out of the way do not put it between the terminals <laughs> 
Okay, and lift the battery right up and out of that car. Now looking down inside of here, you see a lot of debris. This bluish green stuff is actually from one of the batteries that I had, where the old battery connector, it swelled up with this huge green blob on it, about that big. I've never seen anything quite like that, but I don't remember what that was symptoms of. I'll look it up and we'll talk about it later. But it uh, looks like down below there, there's still some of that green shit in there, so we're gonna get our shop vac and we're gonna clean that out. And then, before I even put that battery back in, I'm going to demonstrate what I do next, and it's kind of important, and it's a good idea, so you might want to follow what I do. Now down inside the battery compartment here, this area that you see actually has some kind of weird carpet or padding in it. It's glued down. It's actually glued down to a piece of aluminum which is fiberglassed into the hole that used to be the floor. And that was done by the previous owner, and eventually I will cut that out and replace it with a proper piece of sheet metal. But until then, or even if you don't have that situation, it's just a good idea to put a little baking soda down inside this area. Now, some people think that I'm a little bit nuts here, but if you do have any kind of acid leak, it will stop it from getting through your floor. Now typically what the battery does is the acid that comes out of it eats off the paint, and then the friction of the battery scooting around wears into the metal, and your window seals, which almost always leak on a Volkswagen, wind up dumping water into this area and then thus rusting it through. The reason why the driver's side doesn't usually have the same issue is because there's no acid on that side to eat up the paint. Now they do rust on the driver's side, but not usually as badly. But over here, yep, yeah, and I'm gonna actually be doing a little bit more of that. It's a good idea to spread it all around. Now inside this area, there's also usually a strap that goes up and over the battery. Obviously it's been rusted out of this car, so it's no longer here. Now I don't see a reason that it's a problem to drop your battery in and not have that, unless you drive like an absolute idiot and your battery's gonna be banging all over the place, in which case it does have the potential that it could split open, and you definitely don't want that to happen. But in my case, in this situation, because I drive this car somewhat casually, it's, uh, it's okay to just rest it on the floor in this area, and that's exactly what we're gonna do. Let's go ahead and get that battery. Okay, still charging, or at least it's hooked up anyway. Doesn't make any sparks anymore, so I'd say, yeah, it's 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 as full as it's going to get. All right, pull that off of there. Ah, it's a good idea to keep this little tree that goes on here. It's going to help stop the uh, back seat occupants from sitting on there and the springs inside the seat touching the positive on the battery, so we're going to keep that. Now, this battery doesn't have a handle, so one-handed operation of this is uh, not very easy. My hand kind of fits around the top, but I can't get a good enough grip on it to lift it. Yeah, I'm not going to be able to do that. Almost. Almost. I've got the strength, I just don't have a big enough grip. <laughs> Alright, we'll be back in just a second. Okay. Put that battery down in the place. There it is. And you make sure your positive and negatives are on the correct side. You see our little negative here? This is the negative despite it being red. How I can tell? It's bolted directly to the floor. And this is a negative grounded vehicle. So, we're gonna put our wire right on here. Tuck this down and out of the way. We'll take our positive wire on this side, which is going to go on here. Now some people like to uh, coat these in a, a dielectric um, grease to stop them from corroding, and that's kind of a good idea, but being that this battery does live inside of the vehicle where it's not actually seeing the, uh, the, the uh, weather, it's not a bad idea to do it, you just don't really need it. And now that we've got that in there, this one doesn't want to go down all the way. Looks like it's a newer connector that I put on here, so it's a little tight. But, I don't think we need to get any more than that. That should be enough. Now, usually I don't like making the positive that tight, and there's a reason for that. And the reason for that is, is because if I do park the car for an extended period, and I'm talking any more than just a couple days, I like to lift up the back seat and pull the positive terminal off. So I like this to be able to be uh, removed by hand. It does seem just a little snug. I may have to loosen it up just a little bit. There we go. Okay, now I can actually reach under the seat and move it. Um, it's still on tight enough that it's not going to slip off, but at the same time I can pull it off if I want it off. 
put a little cover back on here which is going to be frustrating for my little quick disconnect you know what it doesn't even matter that I have that cover you know why because the terminal sticks out from behind it so F the little cover we're not going to worry about that today got that sucker all hooked up throw a little more baking soda around the area if you've got a rubber tray or a plastic tray that fits the battery it's a good idea to put that in this location as well and just for shits and grins throw a little baking soda on the bottom of it also you don't necessarily have to get the baking soda on top of the battery and you definitely don't want to get it in the battery but uh, that helps protect that area from any little acid squirts or splashes or whatever else may come out of that battery at this point we're coming back out of the car here and we're doing the trickiest part of all and that's putting this back seat back in and it's a pain in the ass to do it two hands I'm actually trying to do it with one let's see just how well I screw up on this the hardest part is, is getting it underneath the armrests on the sides here which is where it went and without getting a seat belt tangled in it which is exactly what happened on the driver's side okay around here I'm gonna kinda pull that seat belt behind that seat and up and there's a little spike under here I can just stop shaking the camera. You see this spike? This spike is what goes into the bottom of that seat and holds it in place when it's in. Okay, it's currently on the spike here. Over there it's not. So we're gonna get that recentered and on that spike. Okay, there's that spike I was talking about, which looks like it's a little bit bent. That's why it's not going up in the seat. All right, there it is. All right, back seat is in. Put our front seats back into position. And uh, put our seat belts back over the seats. And she's ready to start. I think at this point she should be okay. Let's find out what happens. Okay, let's see what we've got in here. Our key's already in the ignition. There's our idiot lights, both the generator and the oil light. Push the clutch to the floor and give it a crank. Oh, that's so much better than it was. It was turning over so slow. Oh, that was so much better. Let's try it again. That is awesome. And it's just starting to warm up now. So the second time, of course, it was a lot easier to fire up. But uh, yeah, that's a huge difference. That makes a huge difference to me. And that's gonna make this car a whole lot more reliable when the weather gets colder, which it has been. By the way, it's 70 degrees today. Uh, yesterday it was like 35. <laughs> the weather is doing that roller coaster ride swinging stuff that it likes to do here in Florida this time of year. And uh, for the most part, it's usually pretty mild, but yeah, you gotta learn how to deal with the roller coaster. I mean, just yesterday I was wearing a winter coat, and today, today is shorts weather. I actually got long pants on, which you guys never see me in. But uh, yeah, it's actually a very, very warm day today. In fact, warm enough to get these open. I'm actually breaking a sweat right now. Okay, we've got this sucker running. So that's how you change your battery in your Volkswagen. Now, if you have a Carmen Ghia, you're actually gonna find the battery in a different location. Now on a Carmen Ghia, when you open the engine compartment, you'll find the battery on the left-hand side. Unless it was a Carmen Ghia that was owned by me, in which case then the battery gets moved to the same location that it is on this car. Now if you have a bus, you'll find it in the engine compartment off to the right-hand side. And some buses that have dual batteries will have one on each side. Inside of my 350Z, I had that battery that I brought back for the Volkswagen. And uh, when I picked it up to put it into the car charger last night, and I touched the bottom of the battery, it was wet. So I pulled out the car mat here, and I've soaked it in some water. I threw a little baking soda on it. It did not foam up. I don't know if it was wet because of the battery, or if it was wet because of the uh, beer bottle that was laying in there. They had a little condensation on it. It was an unopened beer bottle that fell out of a six-pack when I went to a party, and it rolled under the seat. And uh, everything down here in Florida gets really wet from all the condensation when we get this swinging temperature from cold to warm from cold to warm because the warm days are, are extremely humid and when it goes swinging right back to the cold that cold air or the, the warm wet air rather will get on a cold object and cause some massive condensation and it might be what happened there it might have just been a little wet puddle from the uh, beer bottle but anyway I've rinsed it out I certainly didn't need holes in my floor mats considering that this car 
has about 130,000 miles on it. The floor mats are actually in really good shape. There's no holes worn in them. They're not falling apart. You know, they're actually in really, really good shape. It's a shame I just knocked this down. I was trying to let this thing dry here. I don't want to put it back in the car. It's just going to get moldy and it's going to stink. All right. Well, I think it's safe there. Of course, the plane's got to fly over while I'm recording a video. What else is new? Let's go ahead and take this thing for a test drive. Okay, here we go. Let's see what happens. Makes a lot of difference with a good battery. Usually I let the car warm up a little bit before I take it for a ride. But seeing as how it's a bit of a warmer day than it has been, we're just gonna cruise gently down the road and by the time I get to the stop sign, should be enough to get it warm. Oh, I'm almost out of gas. Probably should address that before we go anywhere. <laughs> okay, let's take care of the gas problem first. Be back in a second. Okay, I put in whatever was left inside of my gas pump that I have in the garage. You probably have seen a video of that. And it gave me almost three quarter of a tank. So that's plenty to get me over to the grocery store, which I think is where I'm gonna go. All right, let's go ahead and take this thing for a cruise. And this will be a good segue into tomorrow's Q&A video that's going up over on VV the Duck VV. things are good. All things are good. Nobody on the road over here. It's kind of weird. Usually I can't ever pull out of this stop sign without there being millions of cars. difference like the rear disc brakes or the throttle linkage that was just a tremendous difference tracking down the bad distributor cap that I had that was that was frustrating I drove the thing around for almost a year and it would run really well for about an hour and then all of a sudden it would hiccup a couple times and then just stall just like somebody shut the ignition off it would just stall you go and you check the spark plugs and you're getting spark you're getting fuel the damn thing just wouldn't start but one day on the side of the road, I had nothing else that I could change out, and, and just for shits and grins, I changed out the distributor cap, and the car fired right up, and it never did that shit again. So I took that distributor cap, and I threw it as far as I possibly could. <laughs> so yeah, I think that's going to be it for today. Thanks for watching, you guys. So uh, I hope you guys really enjoyed watching this video today. So please give me a thumbs up. You know, please leave a comment. Please subscribe. Pluck that little dingle belly you see down there next to the subscribe button. Don't forget to check out Duckman Cycles VW Garage up on the Facebook group page. If you'd like to email me, duckmancycles at duckshit.net. I have an Instagram, by the way, VV the Duck VV, And I've also got another YouTube channel where I do a lot of my yappy yappy kind of stuff like this, my midday Q&As and other things associated with that. And uh, you want to check that also. Same name as the Instagram account. VV the Duck VV. And you can see a little bit about what I get into. It's a lot of Volkswagen stuff, but it's a lot of the other stuff that's in my life as well, you know, like work experience stuff and things with the ducks and, you know, just, just that sort of thing. Uh, of course, Skeeter has her own channel too. If you want to see stuff that's specifically about her, you can visit Skeeter the Duck. Thanks so much for watching, you guys. I really do appreciate it. Check out my website, duckshit.net, and we'll see you next time. <laughs>
Today I'm pissed off. I have Mentos. Yay! Woo! I'm waiting for the Mentos theme song to play so that way like things get better. It's not like what's supposed to happen when like shit bad shit happens. This is true. Hands wet. <laughs>